Hey there! This video showcases a scale I have developed for measuring and describing the intensity of psychedelic experiences, ranging from a subperceptual microdose to the complete obliteration of your ability to remain conscious and process information. This scale generally applies to many of the classical psychedelics, but there are still some psychedelic substances that are outliers in terms of their subjective effect profiles, or that may be less likely to induce certain states or effects regardless of the amount. Although this scale is the one I personally use when discussing the effects of most psychedelics, there are also some other intensity scales that have been created over time. Most notably, the Shulgin Rating Scale by famed psychedelic biochemist Alexander Shulgin, and Timothy Leary's Five Levels of Psychedelic Experience, both of which helped inspire and inform my own scale. A primary motivation for my subjective effect documentation work is to improve our ability to communicate with each other about the experiences of altered states of consciousness, and describing the level of intensity for an experience is perhaps one of the more difficult or imprecise components of this work. Different people will have different effects at different levels of intensity and for different substances, especially when you take into account different levels of experience with psychedelics. That said, from my many years of exploring, writing about, and discussing the psychedelic experience, this scale is by far the most functional i found for the purpose of measuring and describing psychedelic intensity. Finally, please keep in mind that most of the effects described at lower levels become proportionally more intense at higher levels, particularly visual and other sensory effects, though the cognitive enhancements at lower levels will more often than not begin to give way to cognitive impairments at higher levels particularly in terms of concentration, short-term memory, and general comprehension. Okay, so with all that said, let's get into it. Level 0. Subperceptual. A subperceptual psychedelic experience produces effects that are not yet consciously perceptible. Taking very small amounts of psychedelic compounds to reach subperceptual levels in an effort to promote focus, creativity, and improve mental health is often referred to as microdosing. There has been some research into microdosing that seems to show some promise for certain effects, but also some limitations, and it's a topic we're looking at possibly delving into deeper in a future video. Level 1. Subtle. A subtle psychedelic experience produces sensory, cognitive, and physiological effects that are slight but just about perceptible. Subtle effects are mild enough to easily be ignored by directing your focus towards the external environment, and they may only be distinct or recognisable if you deliberately focus on them. The overall effect is essentially a sober headspace. Your typical experience of the world will be largely maintained, but with subtle cognitive and sensory enhancements or alterations. The specific effects of subtle psychedelic experiences may include mild versions of sensory enhancements such as colour enhancement, which makes colours look brighter and more saturated, sensory distortions such as visual drifting, cognitive effects such as focus enhancement, an intensification of emotions or music appreciation enhancements, and tactile effects such as paresthesia, which are spontaneous sensations like fuzziness, tingling, or warmth. Level 2 Mild. A mild psychedelic experience takes you slightly outside a purely sober headspace. Depending on the person's experience of psychedelics, personality, and whether they are focused on specific tasks or immersive activities, they may be able to suppress or ignore the effects. But someone who is embracing the experience will typically have a mild but noticeable alteration in their general experience of themselves or the world around them. This level typically induces a range of weak but noticeable effects, such as closed-eye visuals of indistinct psychedelic geometry, ill-defined open-eye distortions, such as the appearance of slight trails behind moving objects or difficult-to-spot warping in textures, an increased inclination to introspect and analyse, and further but still mild perceived improvements in the clarity or acuity of the senses.
level three, moderate. A moderate psychedelic experience induces an overt, though not overwhelming, psychedelic headspace, such that your experience of yourself and the world is distinctively altered. At this level, the effects and the nature of the substance become clear and defined enough that ignoring its action becomes difficult. But people are typically able to engage in regular behaviours and maintain the ability to communicate properly, though there will likely be noticeable impairments in concentration and short-term memory that may be overcome with effort. A moderate psychedelic experience can induce a range of well-defined sensory effects. These can include visual distortions such as distinct traces following moving objects, symmetrical texture repetition, the external environment appearing to warp, melt, and flow. Colours in the environment may be not only brighter but shift to a different hue. Distinctly present and complex yet not overwhelming geometry may also be present within both a person's open and closed eye vision. Alongside this, there may be more hallucinatory effects such as pareidolia, which causes you to see patterns, objects, and faces embedded within textures or scenery, and daydreams accompanied by closed eye imagery. In terms of cognitive states, there will often be increased feelings of spirituality, memory and concentration impairment, an increased tendency to notice or appreciate common or mundane things that you would normally ignore, and an increased tendency for your mind to wander from topic to topic and thought to thought. It's also very common to have an increased tendency to perceive things as funny and to laugh very easily. Your proprioception or your internal sense of the position of your body can be distorted, and you may perceive your own body as heavier or lighter than usual. You may experience a body high that causes movements or physical touch to be unusually pleasurable in addition to increased paresthesia. Level 4. Strong. A strong psychedelic experience creates a fully immersive headspace that significantly alters a person's experience of the world and of themselves. A person in a strong psychedelic experience may be disinclined to speak or may have speaking patterns that are noticeably different from their sober state. They may also be disinclined to engage in activities or have great difficulty performing tasks due to impairments in concentration, short-term memory, and motor control. At this level, the effects are powerful enough that a person will become fully engaged in the psychedelic experience, whether they wish to be or not. Strong psychedelic experiences often affect a person's present ego or self-perception. You might perceive yourself as more youthful, less connected to the mundane world, or more primal or animalistic. Your ego or personal biases can be suppressed, which can contribute to new realizations or ideas. You might have a tendency to view things as important, special, or meaningful, just based on a feeling. Your ability to think clearly and quickly will be reduced, but the thoughts you have will often seem very significant. Strong level visual effects will also become increasingly complex. Extremely complex psychedelic geometry may be visible within the external environment with your eyes open, which can begin to partially obscure your surroundings, making it quite difficult to see clearly. If you close your eyes, this complex and colourful psychedelic geometry will be even more distinct, continuously rotating and shifting along multiple dimensions simultaneously behind your eyelids. Internal hallucinations may also occur, as you partially disconnect from your external environment and slip into fleeting dreamlike psychedelic scenes and scenarios. 
Objects in your environment may appear to transform or become distorted beyond recognition. You may experience synesthesia, a melding of the senses such that a sound might feel like a tactile sensation or be represented in the form of visual geometry. Level 5. Heavy. A heavy psychedelic experience is the upper limits of practical psychedelia. At this level, the person will be rendered incapable of functioning and communicating properly, leaving them either completely disconnected from their environment or extremely disorientated. A person in this state will have their experience of the world and themselves completely transformed into something entirely outside of the mundane. Heavy amounts of psychedelics typically induce a wide range of all-consuming effects, such as breaking through into a space that is comprised of unfathomably intricate geometric patterns and hallucinatory states, such as contact with autonomous entities and the visitation of imagined realms. A complete loss of the person's sense of self or ego, delusions, and occasionally life-changing spiritual or transpersonal experiences. The specific effects of heavy experiences can vary significantly from person to person, substance to substance, and even session to session, for the same person with the same substance. It is very common for a person's ego or aspects of their identity to be entirely dissolved, which can allow for or induce a wide range of transpersonal experiences, most of which I covered within our recent stream on the topic of mystical experiences, in which I arranged them into an arbitrary tier list based on my own personal biases. Level 6. Extreme. An extreme psychedelic experience causes effects that are so powerful and pronounced that the person will typically be rendered unconscious and amnesic for a prolonged period of time, usually with highly exaggerated and uncomfortable physical side effects. At this level, the person will experience the effects typically associated with the previously described heavy level during the onset and offset of their trip. During the peak, however, they will simply black out and become unconscious. On a personal note, I have tried many times to experience what is beyond ego disillusion on a wide variety of psychedelic compounds, and I can confidently confirm that even in the best case scenarios, it simply leads to increasingly prolonged and intensified bouts of absent selfhood that shifts into periods of unconsciousness and amnesia. There is no therapeutic or recreational value to taking the psychedelic experience to such an extreme, and I would therefore very much recommend against it. So yeah, I hope you enjoyed this look into the leveling system that I personally use for psychedelic experiences. I'll be referencing this video in future uploads to give a common ground for understanding the different kinds of experiences I describe. And I have a separate intensity scale for dissociative substances that's already fully fleshed out on effectindex.com, so let me know in the comments if you'd like to see a video for that scale as well. And to reiterate a point I made earlier, this scale does not perfectly apply to every single psychedelic compound. There are a number of notable outliers, such as diisopropyl tryptamine, which primarily induces auditory distortions and hallucinations, with few of the other traditional psychedelic effects. Alongside of this, 5-methoxy-dimethyltryptamine famously induces most classical psychedelic effects, but has uniquely overwhelming tactile amplifications and an almost complete lack of visual effects, except for, in many cases, an all-encompassing white light at breakthrough levels. Even between most classical psychedelics, there are still a number of differences in terms of their unique subjective effect profiles. For example, individual compounds may differ in terms of whether they induce sedation or stimulation, the distinct aesthetic qualities of their visual effects, different kinds of tactile sensations, tendencies towards different kinds of contemplative periods or general changes in thought structure, the proportional ratios of hallucinations versus complex geometry and patterns, 
The prevalence of uncomfortable physical side effects such as nausea and vasoconstriction, the likelihood of insights and mystical experiences, and whether the experience is more likely to be interpreted as therapeutic, anxiety-inducing, recreational, or some combination of the three. Despite all of these differences, however, the majority of classical psychedelics have a lot of similarities, and this intensity scale focuses on the effects that they have the most in common. If you've made it this far into the video, thanks so much for watching. I just wanted to take a moment to directly thank all of my new and old Patreon supporters. In order to improve the value of pledging to me, I have a $5 plus tier called Psychonautics Advisee, which essentially means that I will offer my informal opinions on and answer any questions you may have regarding psychonautics and the general exploration of altered states of consciousness. I am a walking encyclopedia on these topics and have leading expertise in this field, so if you're just starting out or still looking to learn, then this could potentially be a good option for you. Thanks again, and I'll see you sometime in the next few weeks within a video on the topic of dimethyltryptamine.